Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another very interesting problem from the JE Advanced Test from 2021 in paper one. It's the ninth problem on the list. It deals with capacitors or a particular capacitor with a dielectric. So it falls in the category of electricity and magnetism. So let's read the problem. A medium having dielectric constant K greater than one fills the space between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. The plates have large area and the distance between them is D. So it's like an ideal capacitor, small d, large area. The capacitor is connected to a battery of voltage V as shown in figure A. So that's the representation right here. Now both plates are moved the distance D over 2 from their original positions as shown in figure B. So they're moved backwards in both directions. And it's shown right here. In the process of going from A to B, which is or are correct? So now they give us four statements and we have to identify which of those statements, if any, are correct. And it could very well be multiple statements. First of all, they say the electric field inside the dielectric is reduced by a factor of 2K. The capacitance is decreased by a factor of 1 over K plus 1. The voltage between the plates is increased by a factor of K plus 1 and the work done in the process does not depend on the presence of the dielectric. That last one seems kind of strange. I would almost right away say, no, I think it does depend on the presence of the dielectric, but we'll hold off and see what that looks like. Also, what we can do here is we can represent this one slightly different and we'll get the exact same capacitance. It makes it easier to deal with. We can simply move all of the dielectric to one side, like this, and have the other half of the space filled with just air. So that's exactly the same representation as this. So we have a distance D there, a distance D there, and then of course connected to the battery. So we need to understand that this looks exactly the same as that or it acts capacitance-wise exactly the same. And when you have multi-layers of dielectric in a capacitor, you can then say that the capacitance is equal to two times the product over the sum so that would be K1, K2 over K1 plus K2 uh, times epsilon sub naught A over D. Now, of course, in the case we have D plus D or 2D, the total width there is 2D. In that case, we can say that C for B in configuration B is going to be equal to 2. This is a general equation, of course, but the specific equation for that one is going to be 2 times. Now notice that one of them is air, so the dielectric is 1, and the other one is K. So we have K for the dielectric and 1 for the air portion. So we can simply call this K times 1, or K, over K1 plus K2, which is K plus 1, times epsilon sub naught A divided by 2D, because that's the total distance. And then, of course, this 2 cancels out with that 2, and that would then be the capacitance for configuration B. So now if we go find the capacitance of our original, right here, C of A, that's going to be equal to epsilon sub naught A divided by D times K, the dielectric constant K. And then you can see when you divide CB divided by CA, which is the ratio of the new capacitance over the old capacitance, notice we have simply uh, K over K plus 1, epsilon sub naught A over D, divided by K epsilon sub naught A over D. And you can see then that the Ks cancel out, so this is simply 1 over K plus 1. And notice that was B, the capacitance is decreased by a factor of 1 over k plus 1. So you can see that we found the ratio. Since k is greater than 1, this is of course a decrease, and so therefore we can say that that is indeed correct. So b is indeed correct. But what about a, c, and d? So now to figure out a, the electric field inside the electric is reduced by a factor of 2k, how do we handle that? Well, we know that the electric field between the plates is equal to the electric flux divided by the area over which it's distributed. So, 
We also have to take into account that we have a dielectric constant. And so the electric field is reduced by the dielectric constant, so we have E is equal to sigma divided by K times A. And sigma can be written as the charge divided by epsilon sub naught, so this becomes K epsilon sub naught times A. So this is what the electric field is with just the dielectric in there. And this is what it would be without the dielectric if there was just air. But now by moving this outward, and now we're replacing this by with air right there, notice that now the new electric field, let's see, the electric field inside the dielectric, does that change? And so now the question is, well, it depends upon whether or not Q changes or not. Because notice the area is the same, epsilon sub not the same, K for dielectric constant is the same, but how much does the charge change? Remember that it's still connected to the battery. So that means that the voltage between the plates remains the same. And now if I look at C, it says the voltage between the plates is increased by a factor of K plus one. That cannot be the case. If it continues to be connected, then C is not one of the answers. All right, so that takes care of that. So now we're going to use that information to figure out A. So now we can say that the capacitance by definition is equal to Q over uh, the voltage. In other words, how much charge there is divided by the voltage. Now the voltage remains the same, but the capacitance does not. The capacitance changes. So now we can say that the capacitance of uh, B divided by the capacitance of A is equal to 1 over k plus 1, which therefore has to be equal to qa over v divided by qb over v. The over v's of course cancel out, and so we can say that qa over qb, or should it be b over a? I think it's, sorry about that, it's b over a, not a over b, b over a. So like there, b over a, let's change that, b over a, like that. And that ratio, therefore, must be 1 over k plus 1. That means that the charge for B has increased over the charge of A. So then we can say that E sub B, the electric field of B, through the dielectric, is therefore going to be equal to, let's see here, the new charge, charge would be QB, which is QA over K plus 1, so it would be Q over K plus 1 times the denominator would be K times epsilon sub naught times A. So to figure out if D is actually correct or not numerically, what do we do? We can say that the internal energy of the capacitor is equal to one-half CV squared. So I can then say that UB minus UA is equal to one half, and then here that would be CB minus CA times V squared. Notice that the voltage doesn't change. And then we can say, well, CB is going to be equal to this. I guess I, I should use a small b, so b small a, there we go. And so this is equal to one half times C sub b, which is k over k plus 1 minus c sub a, which is k, times epsilon sub naught a over d times v squared. Now, of course, all that is constant. So we can see that the difference between the two depends upon this. And if we work that out, we get uh, this is equal to, I'm only going to work out what's inside there. So I factor out a k times but in parentheses, I get uh, 1 over k plus 1 minus 1, like that. So I'm only going to go with what's inside the parentheses. Then over common denominator, I get this is equal to k times 1 minus k plus 1 over k plus 1, like this. And notice that the ones, uh, let's see, minus... Oh, that would be minus, right? So it's minus k minus 1 because it's minus 1. And so the 1's cancel out. I end up with minus k squared over k plus 1. So notice that 
if k was 1, I end up with 1 over 2. But if k is not 1, if k is 2, for example, I end up with minus 4 over 3. So the value of k does play a role in the difference in the energy between UB and UA. Therefore, we cannot say that in this process does not depend on the presence of the dielectric, and so therefore the work done, so therefore that is also not a correct statement. And finally, the result then is there's only one correct answer, B, the capacitance is decreased by a factor of 1 over K plus 1. And that is how it's done. That took a whole lot more than three and a half minutes. I don't see how possibly you can do this in a lot of time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. You do have to remember the generalization of how you have, what the capacitance is when you have two layers, whatever the two layers may happen to be with a different dielectric constant. We then have to go ahead and realize that this configuration is exactly the same as that conf configuration. So then you have to find the ratio of the new capacitance over the old capacitance. Then you have to realize that the electric field is equal to the flux divided by the area, and the flux can be written as Q over epsilon sub naught, and of course, with the dielectric constant, you have to account for the K. The electric field gets weaker as you have a stronger or a bigger dielectric in there. Then you have to realize that capacitance is Q over V, and therefore, since V doesn't change, the way the capacitance changes is in the same ratio as the charge changes. So more and more charge is loaded onto the plates as you're moving the dielectric, uh, as you're moving the plates apart. So you have to do work. And then here you calculate how much work is done. So you calculate the work at B minus the work of A. And so work is done to pull the plates apart. And therefore you can see that it does depend on that dielectric. And you can also see that the voltage between the plates is not increased by a factor of K plus 1 because the voltage must remain the same. And that is how we do that. It's a lot of work, a lot of things to think about.